All right, so apologies in advance for the quality of the audio and of the lighting. I'm obviously not in my usual recording setting, but um, I wanted to show you this annotated classic fairy tales while I'm here at my parents' uh, house in France visiting, um, uh, because it's a book that I don't own. This is a book that I uh, actually gave my mother for uh, Christmas, or uh, possibly for her birthday a couple of years back. And uh, yeah, it's really, really lovely. And I wanted to wanted to show you. Uh, it's a book that I spotted in London a few years ago, and uh, I know that my mother's uh, my mother rather is rather interested in fairy, fairy uh, excuse me in fairy tales. Um, let me show you a a quick look at the cover. There we've got this really nice um, fuchsia um, uh, metallic paint stamp with Hansel and Gretel there and it's quite a nice um, textured cover. Same thing on the spine over there. Right. And the idea is that yes, it, they are fairy tales, of course, but they are, it's much more than that. It's an analysis of fairy tales, some of the best loved fairy tales um, that have something to tell us from a Jungian psychological point of view. So yeah, you can see you've got a little Red Riding Hood, um, Hansel, Gretel, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, all the uh, all, all the big hitters, all the very um, uh, Jungian, is that a word? Jungianly analyzable? <laughs> Probably not, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, uh, I think Bluebeard and Vasilisa the Fair were uh, extensively analyzed in Women Who Run With The Wolves. That's another big recommendation. So that those are the, the stories that you get. Um, let me give you a look at the inside. So yeah, you get an introduction about uh, why it's important to analyze the fairy tales, the history of fairy tales, what it, um, um, uh, how fairy tales have evolved and changed uh, depending on the um, on the version and why they might have changed and so on and so forth um, and the art of storytelling of course and then you've got a couple of scenes of storytelling now this is where these kind of well relatively large format images end uh, however there are images all the way through and you'll see that here we start with the little red riding hood there's quite an extensive introduction with notes to the introduction. Um, then we get the story itself here, and then the analyses, the, the, the notes are in the margins, which is I think works very nicely. Um, I, I'd prefer this actually, rather than having to go to the back of the book, since these notes are really the point of this edition. The, the, if you want a fairy tale book, there are plenty of fairy tale books out there. This book is about the analysis of these fairy tales. And so the analysis is the, is the main feature. It's not, it's not an appendix, right? It's not uh, hidden away at the back. And then you have lots of um, images, lots and lots of images. Now, one of the greatest uh, criticisms that I've seen people having about this edition is that these uh, images are tiny, and they really are tiny, uh, but if they were larger, we would only get maybe a quarter of the fairy tales that we get here. We mustn't forget that the analysis is the main feature, but this is really a fantastic bonus because we get to see the artist, we get to see the title of the art, and we can go and look it up. <laughs> in a much bigger uh, format, maybe on a computer screen, maybe on a tablet, whatever you've got that can really uh, present this in a in a large format, or even grab a uh, 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 an edition uh, that shows the pictures in a in a in a big format. If you prefer to consume your pictures on paper, of course, right. But um, I, I think it's fantastic that they haven't just taken one of the pictures, blown it up because that of course would be a fairy tale book. This is an analysis of fairy tales and so you get all the possible pictures or at least a very vast selection of traditionally used illustrations and they're fantastic. They're absolutely, yeah, much too small to appreciate of course unless you've got a magnifying glass and even then you know you, there's only so far that you can blow something this small up. But uh, having the reference 
you know, being able to spot, oh my goodness, that is absolutely gorgeous. It's Arthur Rackham, Little Red Riding Hood, 1909. Google, there you go, Arthur Rackham, Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, there it is, massive, big screen. <laughs> and you can see the whole thing, right? Um, uh, and, and so this is, this is giving you information that you can go and find out more about uh, later on, which I think works perfectly fine. The, um, the, Notes, uh, just to talk about the notes a little bit. Um, I'll just uh, zoom into one of the notes there that you can pause on and read at your own um, at your own leisure. Uh, let me find maybe one of the notes that uh, that goes with the story itself. So uh, let's see, where is number two? Here it is. She ordered the girl to carry out all the menial household chores. So sometimes they might be notes uh, that are uh, of a nature um, to give us a, a psychological insight. Sometimes they'll give us a historical insight. Um, uh, sometimes it'll be uh, a note on the translation. Sometimes it'll be a note on, um, uh, on uh, you know, how to interpret this, on the symbolism and so on and so forth. It just goes very, very deep. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a real joy. Uh, some of the, some of the stories are more profusely illustrated than others. You know, some of them have. Uh, uh, some of them are just not as as popular as others. Rumpel Stiltskin, of course, is very popular, but maybe not as popular as, let's say, a story like Cinderella or Snow, Snow White, uh, and so may not have quite as many, <clears throat> excuse me, illustrations available for it. Uh, yeah, of course, you've got lots of Arthur Rackham, lots of Gustave Doré, um, and um, uh, yeah, and and the occasional anonymous um, artwork. There we are. A Little Mermaid, that lovely Edmund Dulac, Little Mermaid. Uh, I've made a, made a review of the Hans Christian Andersen um, colour edition, which has got all the Dulac um, illustrations, which is so, so lovely. There we go. And then once we get to the back, we seem to have a few more here. Uh, Walter Crane's illustrations. These are appendices. So let's have a quick look at those appendices. So some biographies. The story of grandmother told by Louis and François Briefaut. I'm afraid I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, the story of the three bears. And then this is Walter Crane's illustrations, which we saw just a few seconds ago. Uh, George Crookshank's illustrations. Yeah, various, various other people. And, uh, and a bibliography. There we are. I hope you enjoyed the review. <laughs> Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't done, also, done so already. And I'll see you very soon with a uh, video that's got proper sound and proper lighting and all the rest very soon. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.